Bless you. Good morning again. Welcome back to Apostolically Speaking with myself, your host, Apostle Kelly Davis, Apostolically Speaking Kingdom Talk with the Remnant. Boy, I've been away for a little minute and it seems, uh, you know, I'm glad to be back in the studio. We've been shooting reruns for you. And I hope and I thank you that have been showing and watching and sharing the shows, um, the, some great topics and interesting things on there. But hey, these next few shows coming up, we're going to center in on a topic, um, God in government. And so we want you to join us. We want you to share. We thank God for uh, BGN TV Gospel, this great network. We thank God for this facility. We thank God for this vision. Um, we thank God for the founder, Anton Bell, who has moved forward in his forward thinking and his ministry has opened up this platform. I go on BGN TV Gospel and I look at other uh, artists and people that are on there sharing, uh, messengers that are on there sharing. Why don't you go on there and just check it out and you will be inspired. You will be uplifted and share the messages that of hope and healing and inspiration that you get from that network. Also, you can follow me. I would that you would go to my YouTube channel, Apostolically Speaking Kingdom Talk with Remnants. Subscribe. We do a lot of live content on there. A lot of uh, sh all the shows from Apostolically Speaking are uploaded there. And you can also follow me, Apostle Kelly Davis, on Facebook. So we thank God for this day. This is the day that the Lord had made. As I stated, all this week, June and July, we're going to be dealing with the theme, God in government. Um, and so I think it's a very important topic. Um, in this world that we live in today, we really need to understand God's role in government and the ro government's role, hallelujah, in what we call the church or ecclesia or in the body and the assembly of ourselves. This is sometimes for some people can be a, um, a touchy topic. I think it's a very needful topic, but there's different aspects of government that we're going to get into and even its infiltration and its connecting to our, our lives, our, our societies, our civic duties in certain aspects, our businesses, our commerce. So these are some of the things we're going to get into. But when you people ask questions and say certain things like, where is God in the Bible? Though These are some of the places that I endeavor over these next couple months going into the summer to bring other guests on. So we want you to tune on every uh, Sunday morning at 9.30. Um, it is Comcast Channel 20. And we want you to share, share, share. So I just want to open up with the word of God, a word of prayer. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this day. This is your day. We commit this day to you. We submit this day to you. And we thank you for the ability to speak, to talk, to think, to represent you well. Lord, cleanse our hearts and our minds. Open up our ears more so our spiritual ears, that we can hear what it is you would say to us today. Lord, we pray for our state. We pray for our cities. We pray for our country, Lord. We pray for America. And we pray, Father God, that your kingdom will come, Lord, and that your will will be done, that you would touch families, that you would heal the brokenhearted, that you would cause the people in our country to come into a live and living encounter with you and in your kingdom. For these things, we also give you praise in advance because we know it's in your word. And you said if we ask it, that we will see it come to pass. So we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I want to get right into this. Um, as I said, you know, I've been walking with the Lord and I've been in ministry for 20 plus years now, like it's 25, uh, 26 years. And, um, and, you know, I've seen a lot of things and I understand God better today than I did, you know, uh, and I'm not, that doesn't mean that I've grasped everything, but people ask questions, uh, being a leader in the church, being an apostolic voice, an apostolic leader, senior leader, a mother and to many, uh, spiritual sons and daughters over the years. And you see different aspects and different questions are presented to you. Like, where is God? What, what role does government have? 
in the church, with the church, in the body, like what, what role and what voice, what, what uh, authority, um, and what place does government have? Um, and where is the difference and what is the difference? I was saying earlier today that we have in a lot of cases, I believe and feel replace God with government. And it was never meant to be the, the thing created should never be worship in place of the thing that uh, creates it. In other words, government was created by God. Yes, government was created. It's an, organi an, an organized way of life to bring uh, protection, honor, uh, to, to facilitate things in cities and civic, civic duties and things of that nature, even business and commerce. Um, and there, there are certain roles that the government does have. But I want you to know that b b government is in the Bible. God ordained it. Um, but we have to make sure that we keep it in its proper place. We never bow down and worship anything. Um, and Romans chapter one deals with that, how the people would begin to create, uh, uh, worship the creature rather than the creator. So I'm going to go right to Isaiah chapter nine, verse six through seven. We'll start right there. Amen. And as I said, I'm going to be setting this up. I'm going to have guests coming on throughout June and July that will, and probably August too. Uh, that will exemplify, that will talk further into, and that will help us bring perspective from different sects of life, different parts of our society, our living, you know, things of that nature. It's very important that we see from more than just one lens. And a lot of times we want to silence people who don't agree with us, or we want people who are not like us to be silenced, or things, or groups, or organizations, or voices uh, that may not, but this is what makes this country the way that it is. This is what makes any group the way that it is when we allow people um, to express themselves. The kingdom of God is expressed differently. The, our worship is expressed differently. Can you imagine if all of us worship God the same way? If all of us prayed the same way? If all of us preached the same way? Thank God for diversity. But I want to go over to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 says this very familiar scripture. Most of you. Uh, that read your Bible, you'll know this. It says, for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given. It says, the government shall be upon his shoulders. Hallelujah. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And verse seven says, and of the increase of his government. So we see the word government twice and peace. There shall be no end upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it to establish it with judgment and with justice with from henceforth, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. So the Lord backs it up and he signs that by saying, I'm going to, you know, bring this and This is a very strong prophetic word, but I wanted to grab the word government out of this piece of scripture and talk about it a little bit. The word government in Isaiah chapter nine is the word Misra is where we get um, that idea of dominion. It also means, it really literally means dominion, rule, empire. Um, it means to have rulership and to have authority. So this is the word, the, the Hebrew word Misra. So it deals with the rulership of dominion. And when you immediately think about one of the things you immediately think about is kings and kingdoms. You immediately, when you think about authority and rulership, you think about different types of government um, over the years. And we know even in this great country that we live in called America, the United States of America, we at one time was under British rule and uh, our founding fathers broke away uh, and formed 13 colonies was formed. And that's how America was started. 13 colonies. We broke away from the monarch of the British, the British crown. Um, they absolved. They came together. These leaders, these founding fathers, these, these patriots came together 13 colonies back at that time. Now we've grown to 50 states, um, but they came together and they said, hey, we, we want our own. We don't, we rejecting that form of government. And we know that form of government was the, the monarchy. Now there's some similarities because we know in God and the kingdom of God is monarchy. It's not democracy. It's not a republic. It's not um, oligarch. It's not uh, uh, um, um, it, of this authoritarian nature. Uh, but it is, or to totality in nature, but it is monarch. It is kingdom. But even, see, the thing that God is perfect, and because he's perfect, when he's leading something out before man touches it, it's perfect. But when man touch it, 
even in all our greatest aspirations and hopes, we can bring blemish to it because we are not perfect. God is perfect. We are not. So it, though the monarchy is 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 an is a um a symbol assimilation and um it is copied like and it is it is taken from the the british like the monarch uh of of that setup that type of government the third the founder said no we want our own form of government we want a form of a type of government where the people will have the voice and 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 the people will get a say so and the people will represent and we'll bring this thing in called voting and elections and and and, and things of that nature so they broke away from the british um monarch and they started these the these 13 colonies started and they wrote out a declaration of independence they declared their independence in writing through a document from the British um, and they absolved absolving themselves of all the duties and obligations and um, the the British rulership over uh, uh, what what would be now America so why did I bring that up because when you think about king and kingdoms a king rules the kingdom when you think about kingdom it's the king's dominion put those two think about those two words kingdom king's dominion and so a king rules on his own or her, you know, kings or kings, you have queens, but a king rules on his own. Um, he does not, he, he has counselors around him. Um, and these are, these are human kings. Uh, they have counselors around them, but their word is the final authority. Their word is the final law. Um, um, they don't, they don't have to get a vote to do this or to do that. Now, some kingdoms in some places now, um, you will have like in, in the British, they have parliament. So they still have the king, uh, but they have parliament is the governing body. Uh, but the king still bears a, a certain level of authority. God's kingdom is set up and, and I make no mistake about it. God's kingdom is superior, man. We, we took and and we, um, you know, we, we sampled and, and, and set our kingdom up in the earth, like God's kingdom. And I don't, I'm not against that. I think that we need to be as much like God. We need to understand monarchy. We need to understand rulership, dominion, and authority. So in this prophetic word, the Lord actually says, um, um, you know, t t the government was going to be upon his shoulders, meaning the dominion, the empire, the rulership would be upon um, the shoulders of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that is um, in the Old Testament. Now, and when you get over to the New Testament, there's another word for um, government and it's pronounced Kuriates and it's um, it means mastery. It means dominion, uh, very similar. It means power in the, in the Greek, but it also means lordship. When you think about lordship, a lot of people will say, well, he's God. He's God over everything and over everyone, but is he Lord? To be Lord takes a different connotation. To be Lord means you worship. To be Lord means um, I, I, this is permanency. It, 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 it denotes permanency. When you think about a land Lord, that's where they get that term from. The landlord owns the land. Okay. The deed, the title, every function aspect of that land belongs to that, that landlord. Okay. Cause he's the Lord over that land. And so when you think about the term Lord, and I, I've said this many times in my walk, Jesus is not just God. He's God, but he's Lord of my life. Meaning that he, he rules my life and I rule with him, with the Holy spirit. But he's ultimately at the wheel and, and I look to him and, and ask him and he helps me steer my life. He's Lord of my life. I don't Lord my own life. Jesus Lords my life. So the word government in the Greek literally gets into that aspect a little bit deeper. Now, I want to go into a couple things here. Um, when you think about, as I was talking about the, the, the rich heritage of this, this nation, and I know a lot of people got a lot of, you know, bad things and, 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 and evil things and, 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 um, you know, just ungodly things to say about this country. And I know this country is not perfect. This country got a lot of issues, but I can't imagine still living anywhere else right now outside of God's kingdom, uh, than America. Uh, we are truly, truly blessed here. We are favored here. Now, the country is going through a lot right now. We have to pray for our country. We have to pray for leadership. And we have to pray for righteous, godly leadership. We have big elections coming up next year, 2024. And instead of us being so distant and angry, let's read, let's research, let's pray, and then let's get out and let's use our voices. See, we have a republic. 
This is a democratic republic. This is the type of government that we're in. This is, means that people go and vote. And so your voices can be heard if you, if, and then, so we have different branches of government. We know at the top level, we have the United States government and we have the branches. We have the judicial, the executive and the legislative branches. And it's a check and a balance, thankfully. So there's no one branch um, like the things that we're dealing with this debt seal and stuff that's going on right now. So you have the executive branch, which is the president. And of course he has a cabinet. Uh, but then you have the, the house who is the legislative branch who writes the laws. And then you also have the judicial branch and they step in when things are go to, to a court or even, you know, you have pell appellate levels, you have a circuit level courts and you've got a Supreme court, which is the highest court in the earth. Amen. So, you know, everything checks and balance. And I say that to say this, even with the problems that a lot of people see this as being the worst thing, I don't necessarily, because I feel like this, there's not one person who should speak for everybody. And so we got to hear, we have to have a consensus of, of as best as we can across America. And so this is why the representation makes up in the house of representatives and you say, well, they, they don't represent me. You got to you gotta organize and do things and get your voice out there. You got to be a very responsible voter, but you also can organize and do things to make sure that the representation in your city, your community, your area is heard. Get the right people elected in the office. But, you know, even in the Bible, Moses had these type of problems. I'm going to go over to it. I'll just show you this in real time in the Bible. Exodus chapter number um, 18. So when, you know, when you're dealing with people and we're dealing with mankind, we have to have, um, order and we have to be able to live together peaceably to even, you know, advance and to grow and to become. So we have to have a government and that's the role of government. The government's role never has been, never was to, to not of America. Now you got some countries and some countries now, right now that are still, Communist countries, you go to China, uh, I, I think the, a large degree of Russia, they have some sort of, I don't know if it's completely like it used to be. Um, I've read up some things over the years that it's not completely, they, they do have forms of it and sex of it, but China for sure. And you have people uh, like uh, um, Cuba uh, and it's another country over in, in Asia somewhere, I can't think of the name of it, that still has that type of government where it's a to to totalitarian government one person, a dictatorship, if you will, sort of like Adolf Hitler, who, what he said went. And if you went against him, the government ran you. They told you what to eat, what time to eat. They told you when your kids go to school, where they go to school, how many kids you can have. They told you what you like, what you don't like. They controlled your money. They controlled your social life. They controlled your business life. They controlled every aspect of your life. Now, I don't know about anybody else that may be watching, but I would bet if I was a betting woman that anybody that's watching this video, you would not want the government to run every aspect of your life. Um, you live here in a country where we have certain freedoms. And although people try to make it seem as though we don't have freedoms, we have freedoms. A lot of freedoms that we even gave up uh, that, that, that was fought against. Um, even, you know, when I'm an African-American, I'm a black woman, you know, there was a time when I couldn't, it was, I had double strikes. I was, I'm black and a woman when women couldn't vote, black people couldn't vote. Uh, all of that has changed. We're not back in that era anymore. A lot of blood, sweat and tears, the civil rights movement, all that kind of things that happened that broke that. But a lot of things was necessary for us to get to where we are at in life right now. And to get this nation and to get us as residents of America where we are. But we have to be civil. We have to have laws. We have to have precepts. We have to have concepts. We have to have ordinances. We have to have laws. This is what I'm getting into. So when you go over to Exodus chapter 18, verse 13, it says this. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moses from the morning until the evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone and all the people stand by thee from morning to evening? So we had this situation. Now we're talking about a million people. And it might even have been over a million at this point. Um, but we know when they came up and out of Israel, I mean up and out of Egypt, 
um, they, they, they starting to, you know, form civilizations and live, you know, people are people, even the most righteous, upright, nice person. When you start building your communities in your home life, cause we may not agree. You might want this type of food. You might want to grow this in your ground. You might want your education for your children to be like this. We may disagree about a lot of stuff. These are little smaller things, but important things. And so how we live to keep peace and to keep order. Moses was standing there from the beginning of the morning to evening time, trying to deal and sort out everybody's problems. Everybody was having issues. Everybody was disagreeing. There was conflict. And Moses was standing as a judge because they did not have a government at that time. So here it is, Moses' father-in-law, who's his wiser, uh, more, 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 you know, got more intelligence and wisdom than he does, says, what are you doing? You're going to wear yourself out. In verse 15, Moses said unto him, Father Law, because the people coming to me to inquire of God, because they were going to God inquiring about, they wanted to pray about, you know, little things that, that certain governments should be able to handle. Uh, Johnny has five kids. I have three. We have this one spot and we, this is the spot that we're for education. Who gets to do what? How do we share this spot? These type of things, how to live amongst each other in common civility. So when they was coming to him like that, his father-in-law said unto him in verse 17, the thing that thou doest is not good. And so in the last verse says, thou will surely wear away both you and this people that is with thee for this thing is too heavy for thee. Okay. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. So we see Moses in a need to um, uh, uh, build some sort of government. And the, the Jethro, his father-in-law comes and says, hey, you can't do this. Let me show you a better way. And we see, uh, and then you get further down, verse 20 and so forth, it begins to talk about how, you know, you're going to teach them the ordinances, teach them the precepts. This is how we're going to, it's some of these things that will work autonomously and you don't have to stand here day in from morning to night and hear everybody's conflicts, their little battles in their civic life. Set these laws up. Set these principles up, set these precepts up, set these statutes up, and the, these will help govern the people. The people were never told to turn to it, to worship it, but I think that's an inclination within the human nature that we are so prone. If we get an answer for something, from something, we think we're now supposed to worship the thing that we get an answer from. That's not how that works. The only thing that we worship is God Almighty. He's the creator um, I, I was just talking earlier today. I came across a, met a, a gentleman yesterday, came across him at a, at a store. Long story in short, he made a comment to me and he looked shocked when he looked at me and said to me, you don't worship um, uh, the sun. And I mean, he was sincere uh, in his face. And I said, no, I don't worship the sun. I worship the one who created the sun. Why would I worship the sun? The sun was created. Okay. And no, I don't even worship me. So the discussion went on and said, well, what about yourself? You know, all life comes from the, the, you know, the human, the woman's womb and different things. I don't worship myself. I worship God. I worship the Lord Jesus Christ. So we see Moses in this dilemma, but we also see the answer coming. Unfortunately, we see this over and over again with Israel, even down through time as time and they evolve and they continue to grow, that they begin to worship things. They begin to worship the sun, the moon, the stars, people, ideas. Even the, I'm going to bring this to us. We worship government. God never created government or never government was never to be formed. Um, when you think about the word government, govern, to govern means to administrate, to bring order, um, you know what I'm saying, to facilitate, to even teach. Um, this is what the role of government is. And so we're, we're having this fight, even as I stated earlier, now in our country, where you got different people disagreeing. I'm not a, I'm not a against disagreement. I actually like disagreement. I think disagreement is good as long as we can come and talk and discuss. I'm not for fighting, rioting, you know, beating people, shooting gun, violence, all that. No, I'm not for that. But I am for open discussions. I don't force my ideas on you. I don't feel like you have to agree with everything. But I do feel like we can come to the table. We can talk. You can listen to me. I can listen to you. And this is how government works. Lastly, I'll say this and then we're going to pray and get ready to close. So the, the role is very civic. It's a very civic duty um, to, to help us in our nations, creating and enforcing the rule for our societies to defend and foreign affairs, for defense and for foreign affairs. This is the role of government um, to a, a, a establishing central language. And I must hit this really quick because our Second Amendment 
our first amendment, I'm sorry, is, is a freedom of speech, which includes assembling, um, the being able to say how you feel, how you worship all these things. And listen, that's under attack here in this country. So we don't want people to be so one-sided that they say the other side shouldn't be able to speak. I totally disagree with that. A lot of people, even my skin color agree with that. We had to fight as black Americans to get our voices heard. So we don't turn around and try to use the very burden thing that hammered and blunged does down. And, and you, you never do that. So what we say is freedom for all, but it should be governed and it should be regulated. And the other thing that the government does is maintain law and order and it is responsible for the economic stability, growth, and the continuation. So we get into taxes, commerce, business, all of these things. But I'm going to stop right there because we're running out of time. I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about, get a little bit deeper into policy, policy making, and things of that nature. I'm really setting this up for the guests that I'm going to have coming on, uh, as I stated at the top of the show. These next couple of months going into the summer, we're going to be dealing with God in government. And I hope that you guys heard and got something out of what I share with you today. I want you to join us back next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. on uh, BGN TV Gospel. And I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our country, our nation. We thank you for our civilization. We thank you for the communities and the families, even those that are watching right now. Father, I ask that your kingdom will come, that your will will be done. I pray that this nation will have an encounter with you. Even as we have just celebrated Memorial Day, we're going into the 4th of July. We're heading into what we have assembled as Juneteenth. And we got all these wonderful holidays to remember this heritage here in this country. I ask that you would bless, that your peace would be upon this nation. That you would raise up righteous leaders into this nation, that you will cause them to come to the forefront and that your voice will be heard and it will ring throughout this country like never before. So we give you the praise and we thank you in advance. Bless Detroit, Father. Bless Michigan. Pour your spirit out in this city and in this state. We give you the thanks. We give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Listen, I'm getting ready to sign off. Please join us again and come back next Sunday, 9.30 a.m. sharp BGN TV Gospel. Follow me going up to YouTube channel, Apostolically Speaking. Kingdom Talk with the Remnant. You can also go to Facebook Live and follow me there, Apostle Kelly Davis. Thank you so much for being faithful. Thank you for praying for me as I pray for you and your family. God bless you. God keep you and have a wonderful, prosperous day. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. Every generational curse off of my life and off of my bloodlines and off of everything that's connected to me that came out of me, my offspring, out of my vows and my loins. Thank you for the preceding word. We thank you for truth. We thank you for the truth encounters, Father. We thank you for your goodness, Lord. And God, I just pray even right now for those that are watching right now, Lord, that you would bring your kingdom to them, that your kingdom will be activated in their lives, Father God. Lord, we know that the reality of your kingdom is now. Grace and peace, family. This is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Everybody, this is your girl Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. Hi, everybody. I'm telling you, everything that happened to me that was good, God did it. I'm Evelyn Turrentine AG, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Pastor D. Alexander Bullock of Preachers of Detroit, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. This is Bishop Edgar Van of Second Ebenezer Church in Detroit, Michigan, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, I'm Bernadette Stannis. You know me best as Thelma from the TV show Good Times, and you are watching Bell Global Network.